So I did this accident in Charlotte. It was U.S. Air. I think it was about 20, 20 some odd people, 20 or 30 people on board the airplane. It was a, a prop, uh, Beach 1900, I think. And um, I remember when it happened. It took off. It crashed in Charlotte. Um, and what happened was there was, I remember they gave us the call at our office and they said, we want you to go stake it down. So it was me and another investigator. They wanted us to get there first, kind of set everything up for the go team that was coming. And I was like, all right, you know, no big deal. It's an accident. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm in the office, you know, I got my, my gear on, you know, business suit and what have you. So I was like, all right. So we go to, we go to Hartsfield and they put us on a flight. And it's just me and the other investigator on this whole, you know, on this airline. And uh-huh. we're the only ones on there. And we're yeah. just like, oh, man, we can take any seat. And it's all cool. <laughs> and we're, we're going out there. That's what excites you? Any yeah, seat? Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I could go first. I could walk back, you know. So then we we land. And, you know, I'm still in this, you know, jolly mode. And we get off. As we're getting on the breezeway, you know, they stop us and say, okay, come through here through this door and they put us in a car and they take us right to the scene. And I mean, it had happened probably about three or four hours, maybe about two hours, actually about two hours. Mm -hmm. Right. So we get out there and the carnage was like, Oh no. I mean, through the roof, man, Uh just just the scene. I mean, how graphic you want to go as graphic as you want. (laughs) We'll, we'll we'll put a we'll put a parental advisory on this thing. <laughs> so we get off, and 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 my first visual is like torsos. Whoa! Yeah, so it's like torsos, just mm-hmm. like you know, all over the place, and it was just a few, and of course, you know, entrails, you know, oh. and stuff like that. So, you know, it was heavy. I was like, whoa! And then it it caught on fire, so that smell. Of, of of flesh, you know. So I was like, whoa, okay. So, you know, we're setting everything up and something just kept going through my head. Well, where's everybody else? You mm-hmm. know, it's 30 people, but I didn't see them. You didn't see 30 torsos. Yeah, I just saw a couple, you know, because of the way the airplane hit and everything. And um, I was just like, oh, man, this is, this is pretty wild. So we're setting everything up for our team to come down, me and the other investigator. And, um, you know, as... As the investigation progressed, and and we, you know, they set up a makeshift morgue on the field, you know, and then they went in what was left of the hull to get the 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 other bodies. It was like they were all like piled up. Whoa, yeah. So as they pulled them and you know identified them, I mean, I mean that's what happens, right? So that when I got to the hotel that night. Oh, I didn't sleep at all, man. It that, was just that, too much. That visual was just like, you know, I was calling my mom. I was oh. calling my friends, mm-hmm. you know. Hey, man. Da, 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 you know, just trying to get my mind away yeah. from it, you know. And the um, the biggest thing was the smell, mm. you know, because that kind of like just sat in my sinuses, man. And I just kept like, oh, man, this smell. How do I get rid of this, you know. And then, you know, when I got back home. You know, I, I, my supervisor, he was in his office. I was like, oh, man, that was something else. He was like, man, you know, you're going to be all right. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, and I just went in there. And for about a week, I thought about it. And then it was like, hey, this is this is what it is, man. This is what it is. How do you keep on going, knowing what you've seen, having that memory of that smell? Like, how, how are you able to move forward? Because yeah. I... I feel like if I were in that situation, I'd be fucked. Like a week, two weeks, I'd just be like, what the fuck just happened here? You know, I mean, I mean, you know, you got first responders, right? And that's what they see all the time, you know, when they see stuff like that. I mean, for me, you know, that's why I try to make I I, I try to make sure I like I understand tragedy. I mm-hmm. understand that. And then I understand when I see people, I'm like, look, man, you have no idea how fortunate you are. You know, you have a great family, mm. you, you know, you're living, you know, enjoy, man, enjoy your time here because you don't know. Yeah. Right. So enjoy your time. Do the, the most you can do. Try to be as positive as you can be, because 
there's another side and you don't want to see that side. So just, you know, and, and that's how I kind of separate things, you mm. know? So that's why I'm always like trying to be upbeat with, with everybody because you, you just don't know. So, you know, knowing that, you know, getting home, seeing the family, seeing your friends, you know, going out, that's what keeps me going, you know? Mm. But at, at some point I'm like, okay, y'all, I got to go. Yeah. You know, I put my mind in that mode and boom, I'm gone. But when I get back, you know. Were you always a positive guy before or did yeah. this make you more? And do you think that's necessary for to do what you do? Um, I do think it's necessary. I was always positive, but this just shined a different light on things, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when when you start interacting with some of the families that that have experienced that, you know? Because I may interact with somebody, I might, you know, I may want to know what this person was doing prior to, mm -hmm. you know. And then when they start telling you the story, sometimes it pulls at your heartstrings, right? You're like, oh man, yeah. But you know, sometimes you may have to do that. But yeah, I mean, it it does. It just gives you, a, it just shines a different light, and you could appreciate things a little bit more. I, I would say that I appreciate things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, at one time I was like. Oh, I want this. I want that. I got to get this. I got to get that. But then you learn how to be satisfied with what you have. And the little it, things and, become a little yeah, more Yeah, and you start appreciating the things you have. So, you know, and, and, and all those things aren't as important. Do you think um, it's necessary to have that outlook on life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in these times. Um you know, I talk to a lot of people and, you know, everybody's like, and, 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 and you know, we used to drive around mm -hmm. and some, some of, we still do, but. Have um, some fun. Yeah, have some fun. Um, but, you know, some people are so set on, you know, the term is getting the bag, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that important. Mm. It's really not that important. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everybody wants to be successful, and mm -hmm. you should. You should. You should strive to be the best. But at the same token, don't make. Don't. You know, it's all about the memories and the journey, not mm. necessarily about the end. So make sure you make memories, good memories for yourself, and you're just not working yourself to death. And then you, you know, you look back and you miss ten years of your life. You forgot to live. Yeah, you forgot to live. So yes, that's important. You know.